Hello, my name's Kerry Lewis and I'm a member of the MrBruff.com writing team. Today I'm going to talk about minor sentences. A minor sentence is an incomplete sentence. Parts are missing, usually the verb, which most of the time is the doing word. There are different types of minor sentences. Exclamations and interjections. An interjection is something you say when somebody else is talking. For example, oh, really? Short sayings, better safe than sorry. Answers to questions, no thanks. Self-identification. You might pick up the phone and say, Peter here. Or noun phrases. A group of words to describe a noun. And I will be making a separate video about these. Let's look at a paragraph of minor sentences. Yes, right. Really? The UK. And you? Sounds good. Best in the world. Absolutely. Got to go. Bye. Unless you're there and you know what she's talking about, these sentences don't make sense. They look like fragments. So, how can knowing about fragments or minor sentences help you when you're analysing or when you're writing? Minor sentences are often used in persuasive writing. This advertisement is from the RSPCA, and here we've got a group of three minor sentences together for maximum impact. Beaten neglected, starved. These words have been deliberately chosen to get an emotional response from the reader. After the minor sentences, we have a rhetorical question. Will you help feed a dog like Archie until we can find him a home? The word you encourages the reader to donate money. So the three minor sentences hook the reader into the advertisement and encourage you to part with your money. You can use a similar technique in your own writing. This example is from the first paragraph of a persuasive essay in Mr. Bruff's Guide to English Language. Tired, irritable, unsociable. Here we have three minor sentences. Again, they aim to hook you into the article. Then we have an explanation of them. My 17-year-old brother is at his worst in the morning. Then we have the rhetorical question. Why? which is then answered, and finally we have the purpose of the article at the end. The opening paragraph is therefore structured to hook the reader into a persuasive argument. Minor sentences can also be used in creative writing to provide information about character. These examples are from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. In our first example, Scrooge is visited by his nephew Fred, who invites him to his house for Christmas dinner. Bar, said Scrooge. Humbug. The exclamations bar and humbug are minor sentences. They show that Scrooge is incredibly rude to his only relation and he's not interested in his family at Christmas. In our next extract, Dickens's minor sentences are opposites and these are deliberately chosen to show the differences between Scrooge and Fred. So, a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon, said Scrooge. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon, said Scrooge. These minor sentences are greetings. Fred's minor sentences are warm and full of goodwill. It's a generous character, thinking of Scrooge and wishing him well. In contrast, Scrooge's repetition of good afternoon is used to dismiss Fred. He wants him to leave. So Dickens's use of contrasting minor sentences heightens the differences between the two characters. In a similar way to persuasive writing, minor sentences can be used to emphasise key moments or feelings. Minor sentences can be repeated at key moments to add extra emphasis, and here the word 12 is emphasised. Scrooge wakes up in the middle of the night and is confused about the time. Twelve? It was past two when he went to bed. The clock was wrong. An icicle must have got in the works. Twelve? The minor sentences emphasise Scrooge's feelings of confusion because Scrooge went to bed after two in the morning and the minor sentences emphasise that it's midnight. Dickens uses this technique to introduce the idea of the supernatural because any moment the first of the three spirits will arrive. 
At the beginning of the video I briefly mentioned noun phrases and these are the subject of a separate video. In the meantime I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to buy a copy of Mr Brough's Guide to Grammar I've put the link in the description below. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next video.